In this video, I want to introduce you to volumes of revolution. And what I'd like you to do is just imagine that you have a butternut squash. So I've just drawn one on its side, okay? It kind of looks like a, it's like a bowling pin kind of shape, isn't it? Um, and what I want you to do is imagine that you are going to cut it down uh, vertically, okay? So you're going to make a cut. And in doing so, in making a cut, um, what you would get, so I'm not going to just make one cut, but I'm going to take a slice. Okay. So imagine I now have my slice of butternut squash. Okay. Now, I've cut it in a bit where um, it is kind of in the middle, kind of curving, so it's not a perfectly flat side, well, flat in the sense that it's flat against it, okay? Um, so like a cylinder. Uh, it's not going to be perfectly like a cylinder, but if I make the um, slice thin enough, then the circles that are either side of it, so either side of the slice, will be almost exactly the same, okay? So imagine that you have taken a slice. Now, this slice so I've just kind of magnified it a bit. This slice will be a circle on either side, and it will have some width, and let's call that width delta x, a small amount of x, okay? Right, then if I wanted to find the volume of this cylinder, I would get the area of the cross section, Okay, which is a circle, so the area of the circle is pi r squared, and then multiply it by delta x, and that would be the volume of my cylinder. Okay, so what I need then is the radius of my circle. Now imagine that this is the x axis. Okay, so here's a y axis. Then the radius of my circle, that length there, okay, for some position x, the height of the curve will be the um, radius of my cylinder. And so, if I had the equation of the curve that would fit this, this would be the y value, okay? The height of the curve at that point for some x. So that would mean that the area of the cross section, okay, the area of the circle, would be given by pi times the radius squared, which in this case is y, so pi y squared. And to get the volume of my cylinder, I would need to multiply that by delta x. Now, if I did that uh, all the way along the shape, so let's say I took another cut, and I took the cut here. Okay, so I've got another slice. Now, this slice is clearly bigger than that slice, okay? Um, but let's say I take it, uh, a very thin slice, so it's delta x again in thickness, okay? Uh, but the radius is, of course, different than it was before. And so the radius here, that length there, is now given by whatever the y value is for that value of x. Okay, so that could be x1, that could be x2, that's y1, that's y2, okay? And so, it would also have this form. So what I want to do is then add up all of those strips together, all of those volumes of cylinders, and I would get my volume of the whole butternut squash. Okay? Now the idea is that if I make this strip infinitesimally thin, and I let delta x tend to zero, then the volume 
of the butternut squash would become, instead of a summation, it would become an integral of pi y squared dx. The delta x would go to dx. And if you were integrating between a to b, then this would be the volume of my shape. Now, likewise, I could also, instead of rotating about the x-axis, so let's be clear, this is rotating about the x-axis. I could just as easily have been dealing with the butternut squash shape. Oh, well, let's go with another shape. <laughs> that's not, that's not very good. Not very good. Spent so much time on that one, clearly. Still not very good, but, you know, butternut squashes aren't going to be always symmetrical. But the, the point is that we're trying to make it as symmetrical as possible, OK? So here's now my y-axis, and here's my x-axis. Now if I take a horizontal slice through, OK, rather than the vertical one, say I'm, I didn't get it through the middle, this would now be my radius, OK? So rather than um, the y's changing as I move along the x-axis, now the x's are changing. So the radius is now given by x instead. So we would be adding together pi x squared delta y. Because each of these strips, I could say, are delta y in width. And the cross-section, again, will be circular and will be given by pi x squared instead. So as delta y tends to 0, the volume will become the integral of pi x squared dy. And if I had it between p and q, for example, then this would be my integral. And this would be rotating about the y-axis. OK? And so this is how we find uh, the result of rotating a shape about the x-axis. OK? Now, we're just thinking of these as, you know, here is a butternut squash, this is what it would look like, OK? In practicality of what we're going to be dealing with, we're going to have a, uh, a straight line graph or uh, a curve, which we will actually rotate around one of these axes. So, for example, if we had... Let's say um, we had the line uh, y equals x plus 1, and you rotated it about the x-axis, um, let's say between uh, 0 and 2. Okay, So we're just looking at that region there, that trapezium shape. If I was to rotate it, about the x-axis, then the shape that I would get would look something like this. OK, so actually on its side, it would look like a lampshade. So if I draw it here, it would look like this. OK, so that's the kind of shape that it looks like, but on its side. So I'd be able to rotate this line out of the board, 
Okay, that's the uh, the bit you've kind of got to think about. It's going to rotate out of the board, sweep round, and then all the way back round. Okay, to form this volume shape, to create this 3D shape. And the way that I could work out the volume is by finding the integral between 0 and 2 of pi times y squared, which is x plus 1 squared, dx. Now, you can integrate this using uh, reversing the chain rule, if you like. OK, or you could expand it out and integrate it that way. Just to, um, to allow uh, first years uh, to view this as well, uh, that's what I'll do. Is I can bring the pi outside of the integral and I'll expand this out rather than using second year integration techniques. x squared plus 2x plus 1. So add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. Uh, 2x goes to x squared, and that goes to x, and evaluate it between 0 and 2. So we would get uh, 8 thirds plus 4 plus 2, and then take away 0 plus 0 plus 0. And so we get uh, 8 thirds plus 6. Well, um, just put those together. We've got 8 thirds plus 6, and that gets us 26 thirds, so 26 pi over 3. And that is the exact volume of this shape. Okay, So that is how it works in practice. And what we're going to be doing is looking at some examples of rotating about the x-axis and rotating about the y-axis.